Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2 Design. A few weeks ago, I've shown you a breakdown of Noara's latest trailer featuring the Queen Kalinga and her tentacle animation sliding on the ground. In this video, we will reproduce the same effect using a snake. Together, we will rig it, animate it, and make it stick to the ground. Let's crawl in. This model was taken from Sketchpad, and I totally removed the existing rig and adapted the model for this demonstration. You will find the link in the description. The mesh is now almost perfectly straight. Before I start rigging it, I will make sure that all the transforms are applied by pressing Ctrl A and selecting All Transform. With our mesh ready, we will add an armature. So I will press Shift A and add a single bone. In the armature properties, I will make sure that I display the name of the bones, but also that the bones are shown in front of everything and I can see their axis. Then I will go to the object properties and I will display them as wires so that we can see through them. With the armature selected, I will press the tab key to enter edit mode. Then F2 with the bone selected to rename it root. I will select the tip of the bone, press Shift S to snap it to the cursor and then pull it along the Y axis. Then I will switch to side view. I will duplicate this bone and make it the head bone. I will roughly place it on the base of the head and then move its tip on the nose of the snake. I will press F2 and rename it death underscore head. I use the prefix DEF for deformation bones. From there, I will select the head of the bone, press E and Y to extrude the new bone along the Y axis. And I will make it as long as the snake. To get smoother transformation, we will convert this bone into a subdivided B bone. In the armature properties, I will switch the display mode from octahedral to B bones. Then, in the 3D viewport, I will press Ctrl Alt S to make the bone a little thinner. It's just for visual comfort, it doesn't affect the way the bone works. From there, in the bone properties, I will go to bendy bones and I will increase the number of segments to 6. We can see our bone subdivided. But this is still a single bone. In the armature properties, I will switch back to octahedral. And then in the 3D viewport, with the bone selected, I will right click on it and subdivide it 7 times so that I get 8 bones in total. The way you display the bone, whether it's octahedral, wire, or b-bone, doesn't affect the way they work. Now I will rename all those bones, calling them death tail, and give them a number. You can batch rename bones using Ctrl F2. I will rename all my bones with the prefix DEF, and then give them a number from 01 to 08. Then I will parent the head bone and the first tail bone to the root bone. All those newly created bones are also subdivided B bones since we have subdivided an existing B bone. They just inherited its properties. If I now rotate the chain in pose mode, we can see we get a nice curvy shape. Note that you can't use deformation B bones for game rigs. Our rig is finished, let's skin our model. To keep the process quick and easy, I will select the root bone in pose mode, go to the bone properties and uncheck deform. This will prevent the mesh from being skinned to the root bone. I will then press Ctrl Tab to get back into object mode. Select first our mesh, the snake, and then the rig, and press Ctrl P with automatic weight. I can now press Ctrl Tab to get back into pose mode, rotate and test some of the bone to see if the mesh is deforming properly. To be honest, the result is satisfying enough to go ahead with this presentation. A little tip, I generally use individual origin whenever I'm manipulating my rigs. This way, all the bones can be individually rotated at once. If we have a closer look to the head, we can see that its z-axis is pointing to the right. To fix this, I will press Shift-N in edit mode and recalculate the roll of the bone using global z-axis. Also, it will be more convenient if the head rotation was influencing the tail rotation. To fix this, I will simply parent Death Tail 1 to the Death Head. One last thing I'd like to fix before we dive into the animation is the rotation mode of the bones. By default, they are using quaternions, but since we are going to rotate only around the Z axis, using Euler rotation is going to be way simpler. In pose mode, select all the bones and press Ctrl R and choose the first Euler order. 
If you want more information about Bones Rotation, check out this tutorial. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. In pose mode, I have opened the graph editor. I have my head bone selected and on frame zero, I will insert a keyframe for the rotation of the head. Since I want to create a 80 frame cycle, I will set the end of the animation on frame 79 because frame zero and frame 80 will be the same. And I will insert another keyframe on the rotation channels of the head. I will go back on frame zero and I will try rotating the head by 45 degrees on the Z axis. For this first key, I will enter a value of minus 45 and insert a key. Then I will duplicate the key on frame 80 since the first and the last keys must be the same. And then right in the middle on frame 40, I will insert a value of 45 degrees and insert a new keyframe. And in the graph editor, I will select all the curve and press shift E and add a cyclic modifier. From there, to quickly animate the entire snake, I will select all the key and press Ctrl C to copy them. Then I will go back on frame zero, select all the tailbone and insert a keyframe on the rotation channel. I will then select the head bone, go back into the graph editor and select all the curve with the A key. Then copy all the curve with Ctrl C, select the first tailbone and press Ctrl V in the graph editor. Now I will again select all the curve and press Shift E to add the cyclic modifier. From there, I will simply press G and X to offset the curve in time until I'm satisfied with the offset between the head motion and the first tailbone. In my case, it seems that an offset of 21 frame is pretty good. Now I can copy my curves, select all the other tailbones, go back onto frame zero and press Ctrl V to paste the curve on all the tailbones. Now we can see the whole chain kind of rolling on itself. But now we will be able to offset each curve one by one in time along the X axis to get our snake motion. In my case, my first tailbone was offset to frame 22. So I know I have to offset all the other tailbones from frame 22. So I will select them all, select all the curve and offset them around frame 28. Then I will unselect the first bone in the chain and offset all the curves of the remaining bones. And I will go ahead like that along the whole chain of the snake. Basically the trick is to offset more or less the timing of each bone compared to the previous one. Then you can experiment by scaling all the curve in the graph editor along the Y axis to increase the amplitude of the snake motion. You can also scale them along the X axis to increase or decrease the speed of the motion. This method needs a little bit of practice, but once you'll be comfortable with, it's a good way to get different results with ease and without building any complex rig. To get a more believable motion, we need our snake to be able to move forward, but also left to right. When the graph editor is open, you can press Ctrl tab to switch to the dupe sheet and then choose the action editor and name your first action. From there, you can switch to the NLA editor and push down the action onto a new strip. Since we are using a cyclic modifier, we can go down into the action clip option and increase the end value to whatever fits you so that our animation lasts longer. I've arbitrarily chosen a value of 800 frames. The animation is repeating thanks to the cycling modifier. I will now switch back to the dope sheet and I will create a new action that will allow us to move our character forward. To do so, I will input motion in the root bone. Once I've created this new action, I will simply key the location of the root bone. My previous cycle was 80 frame long, so this new action will also be 80 frame long. So to get started, I can duplicate my keys and move them on frame 80. What I want to achieve now is the left to right motion of the snake while it's moving forward. Adding this motion to the swinging animation we already did will bring better results. So I will go on frame 40 
and I will offset the x value, the right value, to 0.5 meter. And then on frame 0 and frame 80, I will go for minus 0.5 meter. When I now play the animation, we can see that this left to right motion doesn't fit. That's not a problem. I will switch back to the graph editor. I will select the root bone, select the X location curve, press Shift E and add a cyclic modifier. This way, I will be able to offset the curve and try to match the left to right rotation of the head. One trick is to copy the curve of the Z rotation of the head and paste it on this X location motion so that the curve variation should match and you should get a better result a little faster. In this case, I just tweaked my value by hand. It's also a good practice to manipulate the curve in the graph editor so that you get a bit of training. Now that our cycle is completed, we need our snake to move forward, so we'll use the Y location. I will set the end of the timeline to frame 8 and red. I will make sure that I only have a starting and ending keyframe on the Y axis. From there, I will push down my curve on frame 8 and red. I will press T and make the interpolation to be linear so that our snake is moving at a constant speed. Now I just need to tweak the value of the Y location channel until the motion feels right. As before, there is no given value. You need to try and see if the motion of your snake feels right. I can now open the NLA editor and push down this newly created action. By default, this new action is replacing the previous one, but since it's only affecting the root bone and we didn't animate it on the first action, you should see both actions combined. I quickly created a ground and my snake is going through the ground while I'd like it to slide on it. We are going to store the motion of our snake into empties and then modify the motion and rebake it onto our rig. So we'll create a new empty in object mode for each joint of our snake. One for the head and one empty per joint in the tail. Once done, we will add a copy transform constraint to each empty. As a target, we'll use the armature, and as a sub-target, we will use the corresponding bone. The head empty will be constrained by the deformation head bone, the empty tail one by the deformation tail one, etc. In the end, each empty will be following the corresponding bone. For ease of use, I advise you to move all your empties into a dedicated collection. Then select them all, press F3 and search for bake. Click on bake action, choose only selected bone, visual kinks, and clear constraints. Let Blender calculate, and in the meantime, if you're enjoying my content, don't hesitate to give it a like and subscribe. This will be of great support and will help me grow in the channel. After a little while, all the empties have lost their constraint and have a dedicating action. When playing the animation, it still feels like the empties are following the snake. Now we want our empties to slide on the ground. So I will select the first empty and I will add a shrink wrap constraint. As a target, I will choose the ground, which is currently called plain. So I will rename it ground so that it's less confusing. For the wrapping mode, we will choose project and we will check the project opposite option. This way, we are sure that the empty will be projected onto the surface of the ground even though its original position is up on or bottom the surface. And I will then repeat the process for each of the empties. Add a shrink wrap constraint targeting the ground, use the mode project and check opposite project. Once done, all the empties will be sliding on the ground while our snake will still be clipping in the ground. Let's fix this. To make the bones of the snake following the empties, we simply need to add a copy transform to each bone targeting the corresponding empty. When done, if I move the empty, we can see that the bone is following. I will repeat the process with the tailbone. Select tailbone number one. In the bone constraint menu, I will add a copy transform constraint. I will target the empty tail one. And now tail one is following the empty called tail one. But I want it to stick to the ground and point at tail two. To do so, I will just add another constraint that is going to be a stretch to constraint and I will target tail two. With this method, the bone called tail one is following the empty tail one and is pointing at the empty tail two. I will repeat the process along the bone chain. Now we can finally see our snake crawling on the ground. 
the head is clipping a bit with the ground and I like to fix this little detail. Do so I will select the head empty and I will slightly increase the distance, but the head is going below the surface. To fix this, I will simply choose above surface in the snap mode. The head will pop above the surface and I can fine tweak the distance to have the head sliding on the ground. I will repeat the process with the first tail empty to get a smoother transition between the head and the tail. And we're done. Our snake animation is finally done. If you are happy with the animation, you can go back into pose mode, select all the bones and bake the action. Make sure you click visual keying and clear constraint and press OK. Blender will process, remove all the constraint on our bones and it will create for us a brand new action. A couple of weeks ago, I shown you how to create an advanced tentacle rig. The benefit of this rig was the tweaker bones because you can directly add the shrink wrap constraint on them without using all the empties. It clearly requires more advanced rigging skill. And this is how we polished the animation of the tentacles in Noara's trailer. You can see that the same principle can be achieved with a simple forward kinematic chain as for our snake rig. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.